There's a set of social and ethical challenges that Wikimedia LGBT is facing. Wikimedia LGBT is the community for LGBT wiki editors or people who are editing LGBT topics. We, we have these problems. They've been recurring for many years and we need a way to address them. We propose to have a conversation series for these problems where we invite anyone who's got anything to say about what we should do about them to give their comment. The conversation series would be administered by paid staff. We're, we're looking for this to be sponsored. So whereas many things in the wiki community are managed by volunteers, these problems are too big. We volunteers have tried to solve them for too long with without success. And we need some administration. The kind of administration that we need is somebody to set up calendar appointments to say, when can everybody meet? We're gonna meet by video. We're gonna meet by uh, on, on the wiki in the discussion forums where anyone who can't join the video, they're welcome to just post text. And we have to advertise these things in social media. It's just too big of an undertaking to do in all these channels. And we also need to do this in multiple languages, which is why we're seeking sponsorship. Now, what, what are these? conversation series uh, issues, what are we going to be discussing exactly? The perennial problems, which face LGBT people. Uh, number one in the wiki community, the one that comes up the most, why people desperately come to Wikimedia LGBT is they say, uh, I'm being harassed because I'm LGBT, what kind of support services do you offer? And again, we're a volunteer organization, we're limited in what kinds of support we can offer people, but there's some really serious harassment that goes on online for anyone who's perceived to be LGBT in editing Wikipedia or anyone who's editing LGBT topics in Wikipedia. And we need to have standardized res responses for this. This isn't something that we can go to the Wikimedia Foundation for support for. We've been dealing with this for more than 10 years. The support from the Wikimedia Foundation is inadequate. We, the, the LGBT community, we've got to do something to protect our own. Some other issues that come up, uh, so we have all kinds of media organizations, newspapers and magazines who come to Wikipedia and they ask us, what is your policy for such and such? Or even LGBT organizations ask us, how do you write about certain things? What is your manual of style? What are your standards for talking about things like transgender dead names? Do you put them in Wikipedia or do you not? Under what circumstances do you use these? Or how do you manage pronouns for people who have changed gender or uh, are using a, a neo-pronoun, some pronoun that many readers aren't going to be familiar with. What is Wikipedia's manual of style for these things? And even people at the Wikimedia Foundation, they contact Wikimedia LGBT privately and say, hey, uh, we're having this problem with the Wikimedia Foundation. What's your what's your policy on this? And we've got we've got to tell them there's many people with many opinions. We'd like to convene a conversation. It, it hasn't happened yet. Some other issues, how to deal with homophobia and transphobia that's that's not harassment. This comes up in, in different ways in different countries. Uh, many people in the Western world, United States, for example, if somebody is homophobic, they're likely to be transphobic and, and vice versa. Sometimes there's some variation of this in the United Kingdom right now. There's um, a wealthy person who wrote a lot of novels about um, magical school children. And this person uh, is saying things that uh, some people interpret as transphobic and trying to mix that with the LGBT community. And we get a lot of comments in Wikipedia saying, how do you manage transphobia that seems to be supportive of homosexual people? Uh, we, we have to have these discussions in our text. It comes up in Wikipedia. It doesn't come up quite the same way in other places. In India, for example, South Asia, there's centuries of tradition where there's a class of people or demographic of people, the, the hijra, tra transgender people. So if you're in India, you on your ID, you can get a third gender designation on your government ID. It's very trans supportive. Uh, so less transphobia there than perhaps in other places. Uh, on another, From another perspective in India, we've got to address issues like homophobia still exists. Heterophobia exists to some extent. There's protests against Valentine's Day in India, for example. So if you have global perspectives about what issues do LGBT people face in different places. You've got to ask different people in different countries, what are you experiencing? And if we don't convene conversations to ask everyone in the wiki community to, to give their thoughts and actually record their opinions, make these documented in a useful way so that other people can access them, we're not going to be able to address these social and ethical challenges. Who asks for this? 
So there's the wiki community. We've been asking for this for a long time. There's a lot of wiki community members who, when asked, they would give their comment. Some of the things they want is credit for giving their comment. If, if they give it, they, they want to be heard. Uh, they want to make sure that somebody has noted what I said and it's going to factor into the decision that we make. There's external stakeholders, LGBT organizations, media organizations, as I've asked. Wikipedia is extremely popular. And what happens in Wikipedia, a lot of organizations outside of Wikipedia observe and emulate. They say, if the wiki community has made a decision about something, that's good enough for us as well. And so when we do have these conversations, we need to make sure that the decisions we make, they're going to be accessible to be read and studied and copied by other organizations. And uh, another stakeholder, very important, the Wikimedia Foundation itself. Wikimedia Foundation is the organization which acts as the steward of the Wikimedia projects. They're separate from the Wikimedia community. So for example, the Wikimedia Foundation, they have to keep, keep the website on, but if someone needs to speak for the LGBT community, the Wikimedia Foundation is not appropriate for that. They just don't have the diversity. They don't have the perspective. When you have a, a limited number of people who are employees of an organization, they cannot speak to social and ethical issues without going into the community. And uh, I'll give an example of a big social and ethical issue that the Wikimedia Foundation addressed. They organized community conversations around something called the Universal Code of Conduct. This was a big deal. They featured the outcome of this discussion in the Wikimedia Foundation annual report. So it was one of the biggest accomplishments of the organization for a year. They asked for LGBT comment on what should the code of conduct be for all people who are in Wikipedia. And boy, did we give them that comment. We recruited a couple hundred hours of volunteer conversation about what kinds of conduct rules there should be. And we, we gave this an LGBT perspective. If we hadn't contributed that perspective, then it would have been missing from the code of conduct discussions. And besides that, we contributed volunteers to the drafting committee uh, of these rules, and they've been adopted by the Wikimedia movement. The Wikimedia Foundation convened this. but. The Wikimedia Foundation could not have done this without community comment. And it's not just about LGBT people, it's about anyone who's a stakeholder in the social and ethical discussions in the Wikimedia movement. Now, when the Wikimedia Foundation published the Code of Conduct, I'm very grateful, but it's still a first step. It's just published. There's more to say about this. The Code of Conduct that they published, it did not fully reflect the views of the LGBT community. There's limited space. They've got to keep the rules simple. They can't represent everybody. They had to make editorial decisions. But come the end of this, and in the ongoing conversation, if the LGBT community does not represent itself, then it will not be represented in such discussions, either for the Universal Code of Conduct, the social and ethical issues that I've already mentioned, or any of the other number of issues which continually arise in the Wikimedia movement. The community has to convene its own conversations to, to, to speak for its community and keep ourselves safe and make, make sure that we're represented. So what is the long-term impact that I want from the community conversation? Well, I want to organize these conversations for the LGBT community so that the LGBT community can be represented whenever there's some kind of conflict or dispute or some kind of ethical issue arises. But this is bigger than just the LGBT community. There's not a culture of supporting community conversations in the Wikimedia movement at all. In the case of the Universal Code of Conduct, which was a very big budget, multiple millions of dollars spent on this, it wasn't the case that the Wikimedia Foundation gave money to communities to convene their own conversations. This was unprecedented. Instead, they had their own staff and own facilitators who were listening to communities. And it's nice to be listened, it's it listened to, it's nice, nice to be heard, but it's different if you have a a professional communication facilitator who's doing listening versus the community who's organizing their own conversations and communicating outwards on their own terms, saying, here's here's the issues that we're trying to address. We'll publish our own statement. You don't need to listen to us. Thank you. We can we can speak for ourselves uh, and, and speak, speak directly. So the long-term impact that I want is that every time there's an ethical issue, the wiki community increasingly, especially when you're talking about large demographics like L LGBT people, we, we speak for ourselves. 
Uh, what kinds of products would come from the community conversation? Is this just a transient event? No, I'm not thinking about that at all. This isn't, it's participatory and we want individual community members. We're talking about hundreds of people will participate in these conversations. The LGBT community, there's several thousand people who actually participate in LGBT community decisions in a year. If we were more organized, if we had administrators to call people and advertise these kind of conversations, I expect that our reach would be in the, the tens of thousands of people who watch these discussions, uh, comment in some way or another, contribute to this. We're talking about a very large community that we have access to. So at the end of these conversations, we need documentation. Everybody who posted a public comment okay that goes in the permanent public archive nobody nobody's left out if you've got a comment you go into the permanent record and then to increase the validity of this entire process we've got to summarize all those comments categorize them in some way say these people all felt the same way and so they're in a category we're going to group them together and the out and then we say so many people said this therefore this is important to put in our final summary statement after we publish the summary, then we again present that to, to community and say, hey, is this a good shortening of everything that was said? Who's got something to say about this summarization style? And if it's uh, the community validate, uh, validates it, then that's the summary that we start distributing to other people. As we do more of these conversations, there's a few directions we could go in. One of the directions is that we could start publishing regular reports of the reports. Like if we have multiple conversations, this one's about harassment, this one's about pronoun usage. And then every year or so, we could have an annual report that says, here, here were the big discussions of the, the LGBT community in Wikimedia projects for this year. Here's how it went. That could be interesting. Something else that we could do is document our methodology and process. Uh, what does it mean to have a community conversation? Because again, this is unprecedented. This is a challenge that the Wikimedia Foundation itself hasn't solved. But if we, the LGBT community, design this process to serve our community, then I think that there's other Wikimedia communities that would like to have community conversations for themselves, either because they care about a particular uh, subject domain, like military history or the photographers or the women's interest or the medical editors, or you could have geographical interest where people are editing any topic, but community conversations for people who are in India or in the United States or whatever other region has a community, a, a language community. If we build up this kind of culture, I think that that adds legitimacy to a lot of things in the Wikimedia movement, especially where there's social and ethical issues on the line. It's just not the case that the Wikimedia Foundation is ever going to speak to the social and ethical issues of the community. The community absolutely has to speak for itself. Uh, thanks for hearing me out. Please support the idea.